Yes. Okay. No, we don't. Always a little little technical snag there. All yeah. right. So we should be good. Um, plural subjects. So when you have a plural subject, like in this case, these carrots, you're going to use the plural verb. In this case, it's simply look. It's just the, the present tense of the verb. So these carrots look fresh. The incorrect version, of course, would be these carrots looks fresh. So right here, you see that this is actually the singular. The next rule, subjects connected by and. <clears throat> so we, it mentioned this earlier. I'm going to clear that. So if two subjects are connected by and, the resulting compound subject takes a plural verb. So we're thinking of that as a plural. We have more than one. That's the association. Fish and meat contain protein. That is the plural. Contain will be your plural verb, as opposed to the incorrect fish and meat contains protein. The next is or. This one can feel awkward sometimes. So the singular here is you're always using the last subject. So let me try this here. All right, so in this case, Sarah is the last subject. Sarah is singular, so you'll use the singular verb. Jim or Sarah prepares breakfast on weekends. Mm -hmm. The incorrect would be Jim or Sarah prepare breakfast on weekends. <clears throat> and then plural subjects connected by or. So local markets or farm stands feature fresh corn. So here, your second subject stands is the plural. It's plural subject. So your verb is plural, feature. The incorrect there, local markets or farm stands features fresh corn. And again, that can sound a little funny, but it's all dependent on what the second subject is. In this case, farm stands. All right, and then, let me look at that. Singular and plural subjects connected by or. So if you have a mix, it's all dependent on what the last subject is. So here, the dogs or the cat is in the kitchen. Your last subject, cat, is singular. And your verb is going to be singular. The dogs or the cat is in the kitchen as opposed to the dogs or the cat are in the kitchen. See, this one sounds... Confusing. It, 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 it sounds, you know, it, it doesn't stand out as being incorrect. Uh, it, mm -hmm. It's really subtle uh, difference between, you know, the dogs or the cat are in the kitchen and the dogs or the cat is in the kitchen. So that's something to sort of look out for. It's one of those sort of finer detail rules that we need to consider sometimes. Okay, so let's take a look at the quiz. Oh, let me start. Okay. <clears throat> So content topics. This chart lists singular and plural forms of the verbs be, have, and do. They do not follow the same rules as other verbs. So they have a little different look to them. And if you look at the, the be verbs, typically your passive verbs right here, you'll see that in the singular, am, is, was, 
and your plurals are and we. Then you have have, and the singular is has. The plural is have. The verb do, the singular is does, and the plural is do. And the one thing you'll notice, the same thing applies, uh, interesting enough, in the singular verbs of this nature. You'll notice they still end in S, right? So just like you're going to add the S on the end of singular verbs for that verb noun agreement, uh, a lot of these in the singular also contain S at the end. Okay. Now, uh, Hajar, you wanna? Read this. Uh, Anna play on the company softball team. Which correction should the, uh, be made to the sentence? A, change play to plays. B, change play to playing. C, change company to companies. Or D, change team to teams. I think it's A, change play to plays. Correct. There you go. Anna is your subject. And you want that plural verb. So that's going to be, I'm sorry, the singular verb. And that's going to be plays. Yes. Okay. All right, and we have a little paragraph here. So at Office Supply, we strive to make your shopping experience as convenient and pleasant as possible. We understand that sometimes you may need to return a purchase. Office Supply's refund policies option, uh, blank, simple. If you paid with cash, Office Supply will refund your purchase with cash if it is if it was bought at the same store. If you paid with a debit card, we will credit your account the same day. If you do not have your receipt, your return is eligible for an in-store credit for the current price of the item you are returning. Office Supply carefully blank returns and in some cases may have to refuse returns without receipt. Most merchandise can be returned within 30 days of purchase, although some products such as open software can be exchanged for another of the same item. Business machines and furniture blank returned within 14 days to qualify for refund or exchange. Expired ink or toner cartridges cannot be returned. Unopened and unexpired ink or toner cartridges may be returned at any time for a full refund. Office Supply Associates or the store manager blank available to help if you have a concern about your return. Or, or sorry, our staff will work with you to resolve this issue. Our goal is for you to leave our store satisfied and to return to shop with us. For a detailed description of our policy, as well as answers to frequently asked questions, please go to our website. Thank you for shopping with us. All right, so back up to the top. Office supplies, <clears throat> I'm sorry, office supplies refund policies. What are we going with? Bajar? R. R. Yes. Correct. Yep. That is the plural verb that we're looking for. So supply refund policies is our subject. That's a plural. R is going to be the plural verb. Next one, office supply carefully. What do you think? Uh, monitor. Uh, monitor. C. Okay. Monitors. This one, they try to trip you up a little bit because if you notice office supply, that's your subject, but you want to look at this right here. You want to look at returns, yeah. which is just, it's a noun, right? It's not a verb in this case. It's a noun and it's, it's trying to throw you off. So office supply carefully monitors returns and in some cases may have to refuse returns. Okay. So next, business machines and furniture. Uh, require? Require, correct. So we have the plural verb because we have, we have two cases here. We have business machines and furniture. So we have more than one here, right? That's this whole phrase, business machines and furniture. We consider plural 
and the plural verb will be require. Okay, office supply associates or the store manager. Is. It's mixed, yes. so we take the, the second one. D, it's is. Yes. <clears throat> so, yeah, you, you're looking at the subject here. You only worry about the second subject, the store manager, which is singular. You use your singular verb, is. All right, great. All right, we'll move on to the workbook. Well, and then Matt, just so yes. you know, uh, Fatiha, her name is written in, I think, Arabic, um, but she's also in class. So I just wanted to make sure you knew who that was. Gotcha. If, if you can see, you can see the names, right? Over there? Yes. Yeah, I got okay. them. Yeah, good. So that one, in case you didn't read Arabic. <laughs> yeah, I won't forget about you, Fatiha. Okay. And our workbook today. Okay. So, again, subject verb agreement means that the verb in a sentence must agree with the subject and number. That is a singular subject, takes a singular verb, and a plural subject takes a plural verb. So, let's see here. Single subject, right? We have this again. So, single subject, the single verb. Christy drives to work every day. Christy is your subject. It's singular. Drives also singular, your verb, your plural verb and subject. Her friends drive to work every day. So her friends, friends being the plural subject, drive being the plural verb. Two subjects connected by and, we know that's going to be plural. Christy and Antonio drive to work every day. Drive, going to be the plural verb there. And two subjects connected by or, the one that's a little, little more awkward, Christy or Antonio drives to work every day. And then two subjects connected by or when it's plural. So we're just considering what's gonna be at the end there. Christy or her friends drive to work. So we're going to use the plural verb drive. And then over here, a couple things to remember. Remember that when two subjects are joined by or, the verb agrees with the subject closer to the verb. For example, the students or the teacher eats first. The same rule applies to compound subjects that consist of more than two items. For example, Christy, Antonio, and Ray drive to work every day. Let's take a look at some of our work here. All right, content topics. Present tense verbs ending in S or ES are singular. And we just discussed that. It's, it's, it flips for verbs as opposed to nouns and subjects. So the subject is always a singular noun or pronoun. For example, Luke, the cat, it, he, she, Dr. Lee, science. Do not assume that S indicates a plural verb as it does a plural noun. Okay. Hajar, you wanna start this one? Sure, yes. My cousins live in Cleveland, but roots for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Which correction should be made to the sentence? A, change live to lives. B, change live to live in. C, change roots to root. D, change roots to rooting. Which one do you think? Uh, root, roots to root. Yes, so C, change roots to root. My cousins live in Cleveland, but root for the Pittsburgh Steelers. I think that's actually a felony in Ohio. I have to check on that, but I know it's definitely that I used to live in Pittsburgh and you, you don't want to be a Browns fan in Pittsburgh. That's for sure. 
<laughs> I'm over here like cracking up on you, and then I'm like, I wonder if everybody gets that joke. Yeah, yeah, there, that's that's a yeah, it's that's a long-standing rivalry, the Browns and, and the Steelers, and uh, yeah. you know, it's it's uh, being 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 a Steelers fan in, in Ohio is, is not an easy. Uh, you know, you're gonna have to put up with a lot of stuff. That's for sure. Are you a Steelers fan? Well, I, I used to be. I mean, I don't watch the NFL as much as I used to. But you know, my, my wife and I, when I met my wife, she was living in Pittsburgh, and I and I moved Aww. there, and we were we were there for about eight years. Uh, so, but so I I know a lot about that rivalry. <laughs> I've, I've witnessed yeah. it. So right. I thought that was a I thought that was a funny uh, funny question. Right. All right. So Fatia, you want to do this one for us? Question two. Nope. Okay, yeah. So. Okay, so let's go ahead. Hajar, you want to read this one too? Sure, yes. Kendall or her sister drive us to get a snack after practice is over. Which correction should be made to the sentence? A, change drive to drives. B, change drive to driven. C, change is to R, change or D, change is to B. Uh, a drive to drives. Yes, A. Drive a. to drives. Kendall or her sister drives us to get a snack after practice is over. So we're just considering what's after the or. In this case, her sister, that's singular. So we're going to make the verb singular, which is going to be drives. And we're going to have to hit that. Okay. <clears throat> okay, the Deep Shade Tree Company. We're there for the life of your trees. Just like the decorations that you place inside your home, trees blank the outside of your house, personality, and character. Not only do trees make your home more beautiful, they also provide you with cool money-saving shade. Deep Shade has been caring for trees for 25 years, working to increase their leafy beauty and lengthen their lifespans. A certified uh, arborist is on staff for consultations and diagnosis of tree diseases. The services we offer include pruning, tree debris and dangerously overhanging limbs, blank sliding and shingles. Our pruning service can save you thousands of dollars in construction repairs by removing small problem areas before they become bigger ones. In addition, debris can attract pests. For example, many homeowners discover that a possum or squirrel blank the debris to gain access to its home. Tree maintenance. We offer deep fertilization, ball moss removal, and web worm treatments. Web worm treatments. Our policy is to provide your trees with the nutrients they need to be healthy not to provide chemical treatments that could harm children or pets. Removal of dead or dangerous trees are experienced, are experienced, yeah, are experienced staff members blank the trees to see whether they pose a risk of falling. Let us keep you in the shade. Contact us for an estimate. Okay. So just like the decorations that you place inside your home, trees. Give. Give. D. There we go. Trees is our subject. It's a uh, plural, and so is our verb. Okay. Pruning. Tree debris and dangerously overhanging limbs. Damage. Damage. Yes. Overhanging. We actually, yeah, overhanging limbs. Limbs is plural. Um. Verb is plural. Okay. For example, many homeowners discover that a possum or squirrel has used has used very good the debris the debris to gain access to its home. This is a good example right here yeah. of test taking skills. Um, you know, if you're faced with multiple choice uh, options, 
And if you're looking at it and it might be a little confusing, the one thing you want to know, like we're looking at this section, we know what we're working on is verb noun agreement or subject, uh, subject verb agreement. So we know this doesn't really apply because we haven't been talking about this. Yeah. And this doesn't quite make sense, but we know we've been talking about these types of verbs, the singular and the plural. So we could at least eliminate a couple of those answers and go to the have or has and see which one sounds better. So something to consider when you're working through an exam. Okay, so has used, on to our next one. Removal of dead or dangerous trees, our experienced staff members. Uh, evaluated or evaluate? Evaluate. Evaluate would be correct if we were in the past tense, but we're yes. talking in the present tense right now. So removal of dead or dangerous trees, our experienced staff members evaluate the trees. Our uh, staff members, Members being plural, so our verbs plural. Very good. Okay, let me go ahead and check that. Evaluate. Okay. Next one. To all my readers, I want to thank you for reading my latest book, All the Wrong Faces. I blank grateful for your time and the attention you paid to my works. Because of my travel schedule, I find it is often hard for me to connect with individual readers. It seems that many people would like to contact me because they have often asked for my address. I am happy to announce that there is now a way for us to connect. You can email your thoughts and comments about my work through my new website. Although I may not be able to respond to all emails personally, I can promise that I will respond to as many messages as possible. Your comments and feedback, like very valuable to me. News and information about my books are also going to be on my website, which also will offer links to other books that may interest you. Each month, I will recommend a book or two by some of my favorite authors. You will be able to buy these books directly from the website. Thanks again for reading my newest book and all my others. Your support and your generosity blank a lot to me. Please use my new website to write to me directly. Blank forward to hearing from you. Okay, so I want to thank you for reading my latest book, All the Wrong Faces. I. I am. I am. Yeah, this one <clears throat> is sort of like that last one. You want to make sure you look at what tense everything is occurring in we're talking in the present tense here see i was could apply if it was in the past tense but here i am is correct and then down here i can promise that i will respond to as many messages as possible your comments and feedback are are right so comments and feedback together those are plural we're going to go with our plural verb, are valuable to me. Your support and your generosity. Uh, mean. Mean, yes. Again, support and generosity. We look at those as plural. So mean a lot to me. Please use my new website to write to me directly. Look look forward to hearing from you. I think there's supposed to be an I in front of that. I look forward to hearing from you. Um, but either way, that's going to be correct. Okay. And one more. Yeah, Please. Matt Paxson has a couple typos here and there. So yeah, you're done. I, I, yesterday too, we ran into one or two. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so please cut the commercials. I am writing this email because I am concerned about the number of commercials being shown on your network during my favorite programs. While watching The Night of Our Lives on Thursday evening, I counted no fewer than 50 commercials. There were eight separate program interruptions, and at least one of them included seven commercials. I think that six or seven commercials blank more than I should have to watch. 
To make matters worse, annoying pop-ups blink throughout the program. These pop-ups usually fill about a third of the screen with announcements like this one, an all-new episode of Hall of Justice, Monday night at 9, Eastern Time, 8 o'clock Central. This announcement is in addition to the four ads I saw for the show during the traditional commercial breaks. Just how much does your network need to push its own programming? How many different people do you think are tuning in approximately every seven to eight minutes? Most people blank a show all the way through. Do you expect the viewers at 15 minutes after the hour to be different from the viewers watching at five minutes after the hour? There's a reason that more and more people are turning to pay cable channels. I can sit through an entire episode of The Vampire's Girlfriend without watching a single commercial. These constant commercial interruptions probably blank viewers to stop buying your sponsor's products. You have no one to blame but yourselves. So I think that six or seven commercials uh, are D. R. There we go. Yep. Are more than I should have to watch. Commercials, plural or verb is plural. To make matters worse, annoying pop-ups. Appear. Appear. Correct. Pop-ups, plural, our verb, also plural. Most people. Watch. Right. Watch. And again, context, you know, where you're talking in the present tense, instead of watched, we want to go to watch a show all the way through. And these constant commercial interruptions probably uh, has caused no, no, they are causing are causing correct. All right, really good. So we can move on, if you like, to the next section. of standard English. Okay, standard English. <clears throat> I spoke about this some, I've heard Rachel, sometimes I'll, you know, you'll, you'll hear formal, like formal writing, formal English, um, those standard and formal somewhat interchangeable uh, when we're talking about like professional writing and things of that nature. So by the time we complete this lesson, you will be able to define standard English, use standard English when writing. Okay. A good writer avoids using non-standard or informal language, including slang, except for special purposes. Although the English language is always evolving, at any one moment there exists a widely accepted form of English that is written by educated people and considered proper. This accepted form is called Standard English. It includes rules for spelling, grammar, pronunciation, and vocabulary. Some words and constructions that you might hear in spoken language are not considered Standard English. For example, the word ain't is slang and should be avoided in formal speech and writing. So standard English is just, it's the idea that we standardize our rules when we're writing or we're speaking uh, in, in a professional manner. Uh, you know, everywhere, <clears throat> of course, you know, around the world, you have regional dialects and accents that affect uh, the way we speak. Uh, and those sort of uh, seep into our, our, the way we want to write as well. Uh, and it kind of creates, uh, you know, lack of a better term, a little bit of laziness. Uh, we start thinking about the way things sound rather than the actual way they should be written. And the way I like to think about standard English, it's, it creates a level playing field. It's one way that we all know that we can communicate clearly and concisely to each other. And 
you know, I, I mentioned yesterday, I'm from West Virginia. So I grew up around y'all and ain't my whole life. And I've, if I wrote that way, you know, if I wrote my, my thesis for my master's degree or you know, one publication that I got to write, if I use that, it's, it doesn't matter how brilliant <laughs> what, what I'm trying to say, uh, it, it, people are going to look at that and they're going to immediately know that I'm from somewhere in the South or, from, or I'm somewhere from, from Appalachia, you know, and it, yeah. it affects the way people are going to view uh, and understand what I read or what they're reading, even if it's brilliant. And I think standard English, it's a great definition because it, it, it levels the playing field. If we're all writing the same way and using the same rules, we don't get to see those regional, you know, it, it, we, we, we don't know where somebody's come from, what their background is. We just can focus on what's on the page. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So right off the top here. So by practicing the skill of using standard English, you will improve your writing and test taking abilities, especially as they relate to the GED reasoning through language arts test. Study the examples and explanations below. And right off the bat, ain't. Ain't is an improper contraction. Use am not, is not, isn't, are not, or aren't instead. Could have, should have, would have. And this is what I was talking about. We get a little lazy with our ear and with our spelling and with the way we speak. So the correct construction uses have, I could have, I should have, I would have. Um, I talked about this yesterday. When, when you're writing, if I'm typing really quickly, I think about the way it sounds rather than the actual uh, grammar rule. Uh, you know, I'm writing phonetically and editing is really important in proofreading because I can go back and find those mistakes. Like if I use the wrong version of to or there or, you know, any of these here. Double negatives. Two negatives do not form a single negation. For example, she doesn't have no car should be written instead as she does not have a car or she has no car. Dunno. <laughs> I have a 12 year old. She is uh, all the way into her angsty teen years already. She's a great student. And she um, has a heart of gold, but she speaks in teenager. So things like dunno. And yeah. I, uh, you know, I'll ask her, are you hungry? Yeah. I'm like, what? <laughs> and she said, I said, yes. I'm like, I don't, I'm sorry. I don't speak teenager. <laughs> they love to mumble, you know, and, and that's, that's one of those things where we get a little lazy with their language. So Dunno is slang for don't know or do not know, where we just run words together. Again, coming from, from Appalachia and, and, and having a wife from Virginia, it's very common to encounter people that sort of run words together uh, and, and make whole phrases. And then pronoun repetition. Avoid unnecessary pronouns. Write my sister lives in Boston instead of my sister she lives in Boston. It's just unnecessary. You're just adding unnecessary words there. Supposed to. This one, uh, would you mean should have or should write supposed to with a D? Do not confuse supposed and opposed. These words also may sound alike in speech. And I'm just gonna skip down because it covers this in the last one as well, because they're very similar, supposed to and used to, write used to. You got to add that D. The D is often omitted because it is difficult to hear in speech. When you put the used to, when you put that up against the two, you lose that 
D sound. And this is actually something I struggle with. I, I, I have a hard time remembering that rule as well. And you type it and used to, U-S-E-T-O. Well, that looks correct. And yeah. it's going to sound, you know, there's not going to be much difference. It's a very subtle difference between used to and used to. Yeah, for me, I, I, I didn't know that it has to be, I supposed to, or I used to. I thought that I, that's the correct one is, I suppose I use. Yes, I you're going, mm -hmm. yeah, because it's so difficult to hear, you know, mm -hmm. and, and it, it is, it's only going to really show up so much in your writing. Uh, and that's one of those things that we, uh, you know, especially if you have regional dialects and things like that, you're you're not going to hear that d you're not going to hear supposed to uh, we tend to run words together that way and then finally try and go and so you try to do something you don't try and do something you go to see someone you don't go and see someone that's another one it's just you know you hear a lot you get used to hearing it and you don't really think about the actual grammar rule. And how about uh, uh, Ghana? Ghana, I uh, I'm Ghana. Is it correct? Or no, G O N N A. No? Yeah, yes. that that's basically slang. I think we're going to actually have a, a that's going to come up as an example here at one point. Uh, again, yeah, it's, you know, going to that's that's it, it's it's slang. You hear it a lot. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'll type that in when I'm texting somebody, you know, because it's it's quick. But yes, that's going to be slang. So for yeah, so for writing, it's not correct. Correct. You you want to avoid using uh, that in writing. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And then some test taking tips here. Some constructions sound normal in casual speech, but are not correct. Learn some of the most common mistakes, and then proofread your writing carefully to ensure that you have avoided them. This goes back to what we were saying. First off, if you can be somewhere where you can read things aloud while you're proofreading and editing, it really helps if you can hear that out loud. Um, and then secondly, you know, that's, that's one of the biggest rules of writing, always proofread and edit. You know, you don't ever submit a, a rough draft. You, you should be going through you know, with, with anything formal, with a business letter, with a, a cover letter for a job, whatever it may be, always proofread and edit. You want a second and sometimes third or even fourth draft before you actually submit something. Okay. Ajar, you want to take a look at this one? Sure, yes. Uh, you should try and get some sleep. Which correction should be made to the sentence? Change you get to gut and of before try, change and to two, uh, add have before try. I think uh, C, change and to two. Mm -hmm. right, we just talked about that one. You should try to get some sleep. Okay, a city I soar. Dear editor, it is well past time for the city to do something about the apartment building at the corner of Cornell Street and Third Avenue. Or are people simply blank such situations? This building has been nearly vacant for the five years that I have lived on Cornell Street, which with each year that goes by, the condition of the property gets worse. It is my understanding that the Montgomery County Bank took over the property in 2003 when the landlord did not make the payments. Since that time, all but two of the tenants have left. Paint is peeling off the outside of the building, weeds are growing in the courtyard, and many windows are broken or boarded up. The problems blank get fixed without the city's intervening. Many of us in the neighborhood have tried to get the bank to do something, but we have been ignored. This situation isn't right. I thought that the bank would respond to the dozens of calls and letters, but no one at the bank will take responsibility. The bank does not maintain the property and blank in selling it to someone who will. Does anyone with the city government care? They have blank quick to find folks in my neighborhood who don't maintain the sidewalks in front of their homes. If 
but it takes no notice of this decaying apartment building. When I contact the city, I get the runaround. Please join me in demanding that the city take action. And I was wagging my finger while I was reading that angry letter. Uh, so, or are people simply used to? Used to. Very good. Yes. D. D. Okay. Uh, so the problems are never going to D. Are never going to. get fixed with the city's intervening. We had a couple uh, double negatives here, right? Are not ever, well, are never not, right? That's incorrect. And again, you sound them through, you'll find the right one. Okay. The bank does not maintain the property and? Doesn't take no interest, B. That's going to be a double negative. What could you eliminate there to make it correct? And takes no interest. A. Takes A. Takes no interest in selling. The. The city is. City is. Yep. There we go. All right. <clears throat> and on to the workbook. Okay, so standard English should be used in writing and formal speech. Like we were saying, you know, we get used to our conversational speech, um, talking to each other. And, you know, if you're from a certain area, you use certain slang words. You, again, Pittsburgh, great example of having some really crazy slang. Uh, yens is a word <laughs> that they use. Yens going to the Steelers game. Uh, which is supposed to be a contraction of you ones, which is horribly grammatically incorrect on top of, you know, being a weird contraction. Uh, regionally, they, they, what was the other? Red up your room, which is, are you going to clean your room? Are you redding up your room? Uh, so, you know, when you're talking to somebody, that's fine. But in formal speeches and professional writing, you want to avoid those sort of slang terms in casual speech. So for example, in casual speech, a person might say what sounds like, I could have done better, or I could have done better. That's sort of like what you're saying with Ghana. However, in standard English, the correct sentence is written, I could have done better. Avoiding common standard English mistakes will help you appear more educated and show that you have command of the language. <clears throat> So common mistakes here. He ain't very tall. Uh, your standard English will be he isn't very tall. And I would take it a step further. If you're writing formally, I would go ahead and eliminate that contraction and actually form out he is not very tall. Uh, take the one extra step and that will be uh, your, your legitimate formal writing. Amy should have done her homework sort of just thinking about the way it sounds, but the correct standard in English is Amy should have done her homework. And then my daughter, I don't know how to ski. Uh, and the correct standard in English, I don't know how to ski. Jake never goes nowhere. We have that double negative. Jake never goes anywhere. My brother, he is really smart. Uh, it's just unnecessary to have that additional pronoun. My brother is really smart. You're, you're cleaning up your writing, making it clearer and more concise. Angelo was supposed to be at work. Uh, that, that soft D at the end of supposed, Angelo was supposed to be at work. 
try and call me this weekend if you have time. Uh, it should be two, not and. Try to call me this weekend if you have time. Before I hurt my knee, I used to jog every morning. Before I hurt my knee, I used to, again, that D. And, and you know, like we were saying, that was something that I have had trouble with in the past because once you sort of integrate your, your grammatic, you know, sort of like riding a bike, I don't think about every rule of grammar every time I sit down to write. And I think about a lot of times how it sounds. Uh, so that's one that I even uh, need a, a little bit of a uh, refresher on. Okay. And then using logic, remember to avoid using two negatives. When you are expressing a single negative thought, when you negate a negative word, you change the meaning to a positive. Use logic to test the meaning of your writing, right? So he has never... I, 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 can't, <laughs> I can't even think of a good example. We're probably going to encounter another double negative here um, to, to talk about that. So, uh, Ajar, you want to read this one for us? Yes, I don't know nothing about astronomy. Which correction should be made to the sentence? There a, we go. Change to not, B, change nothing to anything. C, change nothing to not anything. D, add no before astronomy. Uh, I think it's B, change nothing to anything. Great, change nothing to anything. And that's the double negative we were talking about there because you know what, what it's saying in, in negating it, you, you're, you're canceling out your, your negative by having two negatives. I don't and nothing. So do not, you have one negative there and then nothing here, then you're basically creating a positive, right? So eliminate one of those to prevent double negatives. All right. Uh, I was supposed to take out the trash. Which correction should be made to the sentence? A, eliminate to. B, change to to ta. C, change supposed to supposed. D, change supposed to supposed and eliminate to. I think it's C. C. There we go. Yes, that soft D that we we're talking about is very hard to, to make out. And then cityguide.com member restaurant review. My wife and I took my sister and her husband to Carmela's family style restaurante last Saturday. My blank celebrating her 30th birthday. It was our first time dining at Carmela's since it opened last February. I can't believe we waited five months to go. We loved both the food and the atmosphere. Although we blank made a reservation, we didn't have to wait long for a table. While we waited, we enjoyed ourselves on the restaurant's back deck where the, restaurants offer, where the restaurant offers jazz performances on Friday and Saturday nights. It was the perfect way to start our night. We blank better than some live music before our dinner. The restaurant is a beautiful place in an old warehouse with high ceilings, big windows overlooking downtown, wood floors, and several levels. We got a great booth on one of the upper levels that looked out over the space. All of Carmela's food is served family style. You order two or three different dishes for the table and then share them. This is a great idea when you have at least four people. We ordered lasagna, spaghetti with meatballs and chicken piccata. The meatballs were fantastic. The chicken was tender and light with a delicious lemon sauce with just enough garlic. I highly recommend Carmelo's. It was a great choice for a big dinner with lots of friends for a special occasion with the whole family. In fact, I like else. So my, what do we have here? Uh, my sister was C. My sister was C. My sister was celebrating her 30th birthday. Although we, uh, should have made should made. have yes and we see here you know that should have that sort of phonetic spelling that we rely on we <clears throat> I 
I think it's C. Very good. We couldn't have asked for anything better. And then lastly, in fact, I Uh, uh, B, never want to go anywhere. Never want to go anywhere. Yeah, because we had a few sort of double negative type choices there. Okay. And apartment bulletin board notice, Neville's Dog Walking Service. Is your dog suffering because you work long hours every day? Maybe your dog is getting older and is starting to have a few accidents. Do you blank plan your schedule around whether you can rush home because Fido needs to go out? Let me introduce myself. My name is Neville and I just moved here from Chicago where I blank work for a dog walking service. Last week when I saw how many people spent home from work at lunch, I decided this building needed a dog walker and would like to offer my services. I'm hoping that many of you will be interested I'd like to find at least 20 customers or else my business blank chance of succeeding. <clears throat> I'll be there. I'll bet there are twice that many people in this building who would hire a dog walker if they knew one they could trust. Here's how you can find out more about me and how I work. We will start with an interview. I will explain the professional techniques a dog walker uses to handle even the fussiest dogs. You, your dog, and I then we'll go on a walk together. I am confident that you will be impressed. I am even offering to walk your dog for a one week trial period. And if you don't like my services after that, you don't blank at all. So do you uh, do try to try see. to see, correct. Let me introduce myself. My name is Neville. I just moved here from Chicago where I used to work. B. Used to work. There you go. There's that D at the end of used again. And I like to find at least 20 customers or else my business will have no chance. B. B will have no chance of succeeding. And if you don't like my services after that, you don't have pay any anything at all. Uh, no. Which one? You don't have to pay. You don't have A. to pay. A. Yes, you don't have to pay. Oh, yeah, wait, wait. No. No, it's D. You don't have D. to pay anything. Yes. D. <laughs> I was looking at that. I was like, wait a minute. Um, it's kind yeah. of confusing. Yeah. They're, they're yeah. so similar. Because it's, you, you got to watch that, that double negative, right? So don't and nothing, that would be two negatives. So instead, we use the anything, have to pay anything at all to keep it in the correct form. All right. And last one <clears throat> Dear State Insurance Commissioner. I have been struggling with my insurance company for the last year. I called my congressional representative's office today and was told that you might be able to help. For the last five years, I have been insured by Beneficial Network. I have always paid my premiums and until last year, I blank doctor. Last August, however, I developed a severe pain in my wrist. The pain was so bad that I thought I might have to take time off for my job. I went to my assigned doctor to have him look at my wrist, but he said that I blank see another doctor who was a specialist. That same day, the receptionist told me where to go, where to go to, and even made my appointment for me later that week. The wrist doctor took some x-rays and gave me a cortisone shot. I came in two more times for shots, and I'm happy to say my wrist is better. But two months later, my insurer sent me a bill for $8,000. Apparently, those shots were considered surgical procedures. In addition, this wrist doctor is out of network, and she blank covered by my insurance policy. I am very confused. My doctor, whom the insurance company assigned to me, told me to go to the wrist doctor, and she took my insurance information and didn't tell me that I wasn't covered. I don't have $8,000 and don't think I should have to pay this bill. 
I'm afraid if I don't blink this soon, the insurance company will report me to the credit agencies. Okay. So I have always paid my premiums and until last year, I... I never had to see a doctor, a D. D, never had to see a doctor. <clears throat> I went to my assigned doctor to have him look at my wrist, but he said that I. Uh, see, was supposed to see. Yes. And in addition, this wrist doctor is out of network and she. Isn't. She isn't covered by my insurance policy. I'm afraid if I don't. Uh, try to solve to resolve try to resolve yes c so yeah. that that th this one you know I've, I've come across that try and resolve try and resolving uh try to is going to be the correct answer and that looks like the last one <clears throat> so any questions on standard english no, thank you. So I'm going to stop recording. Maybe. So much.